Today's episode is brought to you by Nomad. Go to the Flathead's best manufacturer, Nomad is a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers in mission focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more info. That's nomadgcs.com for more information. Welcome back to the Interlake Sports Now. I'm Josh Dugan, and we'll get this thing rocking and rolling with some exciting headlines involving the Glacier Wolfpack state champion softball team a pair of Montana State track and field stars, and a look at how a pair of Valley athletes fared at the annual Montana-Wyoming All-Star Basketball Game. Plus, we'll take a look at some of the key performers for the Glacier Range Riders as they just won their third straight series and sit one game back from the first place. Missoula Paddleheads as they enter a six-game stand with the Paddleheads. So, fun stuff coming up in the baseball scene in the Valley. Let's dive into those local softball headlines, starting with a member of the state championship, Glacier Wolfpack softball team, who just added another piece of hardware to their trophy case last weekend. Glacier softball ace and slugger El Farrell was named the Montana Gatorade Player of the Year last week. That is exciting stuff right there. Here's a quote from Gatorade. The award recognizes not only outstanding athletic excellence, but also high standards of academic achievement and exemplary character demonstrated on and off the field, distinguishing Farrell as Montana's best high school softball player. Awesome stuff. For those who don't don't know, the Gatorade Player of the Year in your respective sport is essentially saying you're the best player in the state. Farrell is also now a finalist for the prestigious Gatorade National Softball Player of the Year Award to be announced this month, the five foot eleven junior right-handed pitcher and infielder led the Wolfpack to a twenty and three record in the Class AA state championship this past season. Farrell batted four eighty six with forty two RBI and seven home runs, two of which were grand slams. In the circle, the first team All State selection posted a record of twelve and two with a two point three ERA and one hundred twenty four strikeouts. Impressive. Farrell, Farrell joins recent Gatorade Montana softball players of the year: Candy Venner of Billing Senior. Kinsey Mole, also of Glacier High School, and a tune of Great Falls High School won it twice. So, awesome stuff from Farrell. Definitely an accomplishment. We're celebrating to be the name, the top player in the state, and have your name in the running for the top player in the country in your respective sport. Major props to Ella Farrell on taking home the honor. And like I said, the Gatorade Player of the Year, for those who, who don't know, very distinguished national award. If you win that in your respective sport, that is quite the accomplishment. And Farrell is a junior, so has a chance to, like some of the other Montana winners, go back to back. All right. Now moving on to some local coaches who took home some postseason accolades. Glacier head coach Abby Snipes was recently named the AA Softball Coach of the Year by the Montana Coaches Association after leading the Wolfpack to their second state title and third AA title in school history. The Wolfpack compiled the 20-3 and record, on their way to that state title. Snipes is a 2010 graduate of Glacier High and became the Wolfpack head coach in 2019. This season, she passed Andy Force for the most wins in program history. Major kudos to Snipes on the accomplishment. Coach of the year, state champion, another one for the trophy case. All right, other co- local coaches who saw their name called in the MCA honors was Polson baseball coach Brad Fisher, who coached the Pirates to a state championship in the inaugural season of high school baseball in Montana, and Polson tennis coach Bob Hislop, who took home coach of the year honors for both the girls and the boys at Class A level after leading the Polson boys to their first state title in 10 years and coaching the girls to a runner-up finish. So, great stuff from Polson. Two coaches honored. And kudos to Snipes for the accomplishment. I will say, always great to see our local coaches receive the recognition, but nothing but respect to all of our local coaches who put in the time and effort this past season in the prep sports scene. Nothing but respect for the effort that goes into that craft and the time and helping those kids, and that's what it's all about. But, hey, major kudos to Snipes, Fisher, and Hislop on the accolades. All right, let's go. To the college scene now, a little track and field action. We've been following the track and field journey of a few Bobcats track stars, including former Flathead Brave product Ben Perrin, who recently finished up his season competing at the NCAA Track and Field National Championships in Austin, Texas last week. Perrin finished 23rd in the 10,000 meters and for his efforts was named an honorable mention All-American. From Flathead Brave, 
to honorable mention All-American. Awesome stuff. Here's a quote from MSU track and field coach Lyle Wees on parents' performance at the meet and on the season overall. Ben did a really nice job positioning himself in the first half of the race. It was a strong field that set an early pace. I think the heat was more of an impact for the athletes in the 10K, and it was a challenge for Ben. He didn't quite have it in the second half, but he gave it his best for a possibility of success. I will say, as a potential distance runner, Running in Texas in the heat in the summer, NCAA kind of picked a tough spot for those guys. That's for sure. Ben really had an outstanding outdoor season. Coach Wees added, gained valuable experience competing in the NCAA National Championship, and they will play an important role and will play an important role in our future success. So the Bobcats look forward to having Perrin back. He's a junior. He'll be back at it next year and look for him to be an impact performer on the track and field scene once again, next up is another impact performer on the track and field scene from Montana State. That's Duncan Hamilton, who made headlines recently for recording the world's fastest steeplechase time so far in 2023. He followed that up with a strong showing at the NCAA Track and Field Championships in Austin, Texas, finishing runner-up to BYU's Kenneth Rooks. According to the recap from Montana State Sports, it was quite the showdown where Hamilton had a chance. He led the pack for most of the race, but with over a lap remaining, Hamilton and Rooks, they kind of broke away from the pack, and with the last 600 meters to go, Rooks pulled away for the win in the end. Overall, though, second in the country is nothing to take lightly. This was Hamilton's final NCAA race and finished runner-up in the steeplechase for the second consecutive year. That earned him a spot. First team All-American list. Kudos to the Bobcat on that accomplishment. Hamilton now looks to sign a professional contract. He'll be competing in the U.S. Nationals in Oregon in early July with the opportunity making Team USA and having a shot at the World Championships in late August in Budapest, Hungary. So a lot of accolades coming out of Bobcat track and field scene, former flathead brave Ben Perrin racking them up, and Duncan Hamilton trying to put his name in the national team conversation, maybe make a shot at the Olympics someday. So... We had the Montana-Wyoming All-Star Basketball game. Let's jump into that, kind of backtracking a little to prep basketball. But All-Star game, that took place last weekend with Montana picking up their sixth straight sweep with the Montana girls and boys both picking up wins Friday and Saturday. Friday's action took place in Gillette, Wyoming, and Saturday's games were at Lockwood High School outside of Billings. Representing the Valley was Flathead's Maddie Moy on the girls' side and Glacier's Noah Dallar suited up for the boys. Moy tallied seven points in their game Friday and six points in the win Saturday. Dallar, meanwhile, chipped in four points in both Friday and Saturday's games. The pair of victories for the Montana boys makes them 67 and 27 all time in the series and brought their win streak to 20, 22 straight victories over Wyoming. All of those are under head coach Steve Keller. As for the girls, it was their 12th straight win in the series, and they now carry a 39-13 and 13 lead in the series all time. So, major congratulations to our Valley athletes who were taking part of the All-Star game. Being selected as one of the representatives for your state is awesome stuff. And then to get a chance to go out there and pick up some sweeps, cap off your high school basketball career with that, that's a good way to end it right there. Moy will be playing college ball at Montana Western and Dallas off to play at Montana Tech, I believe. So, hey, best of luck to both of them representing the Valley well and looking forward to following along with their journey at the next level. All right, speaking of the next level, let's get into the Valley's pro baseball team, the Glacier Range Riders of the Pioneer League a little bit, who just won their third straight series by taking four of six games in Billings versus the Mustangs. Road Taking their series on the road is never easy. The Range Riders are 11-5 over their first 16 games on the year, and next up is a trip to Missoula to start out a six-game series versus the first-place Paddleheads, who are 13-5 entering the series. The first three games of the series are in Missoula, and the final three games of the series will be back in the Valley at Glacier Bank Ballpark over the weekend. So the Riders have a chance to make a dent in that first place spot. You know what I'm saying? They're sitting one game back of the Paddleheads. It's a great opportunity for Glacier to stay in the hunt and potentially even take the top spot in the division as the summer heats up. Let's talk about a couple contributors for the Riders so far. First-year outfielder Benjamin Fitzgerald has been a major contributor to the Range Riders' early success. He leads the team with seven home runs, which has him tied for the most in the Pioneer League with Ron Washington Jr. of the Grand Junction Jackalopes. 
great team name. Had to get that one in the show. Grand Junction Jackalopes. All right. Cruz Taylor is another first-year range rider who made his presence felt by swiping a Pioneer League lead in 11 bags so far. And second-year range rider shortstop Gabe Hal isn't far behind with nine stolen bases, which has him tied for second in the league. I will mention... Been out to two Range Riders games so far, following along with all the games via the box score and the recaps. They play some some good small ball, do a great job of getting guys on base, and when they get guys on base, they're not afraid to swipe a bag, take a chance, move the extra runner, lay down a bunt to move a guy around. It's old school baseball, but it works. And then when you got a guy like Fitzgerald step into the plate, hitting seven bombs, when the time's right, they crack one. So they have a good formula right now to success. And I had to say it with the stolen bases because it is making a comeback in baseball with some of the rule changes. Larger, ba- uh, larger bases are allowing guys to steal easier. That being said, shout out the Riders for taking advantage of it. They've been fun to watch. They're electric, and when they get guys on base, you don't look away because you don't know if they're going to take a chance. As far as the Range Riders pitching staff, starting pitchers Jonathan Pintero and Noah Barros have been leading the charge with two wins apiece. Pintaro is the second lowest ERA right now in the Pioneer League at 1.53, while Barros is fifth in the league, sitting at a 2.87 ERA as the Ranger, as of the Range Riders off day, June 12th. It is not easy to pitch in the Pioneer League. I've mentioned that a couple times. The altitude in the Rocky Mountains, a lot of great hitters, the ball's flying, the new shift rules make it that much tougher. It's easier for guys to get hit. So Putting up ERA numbers like that ain't easy, and it's been impressive. So the Riders have had a formula of strong pitching, clutch hitting when they need it, and not being afraid to take the extra bag. So it's an old-school formula, but it works. So shout-out first-year manager Stu Peterson for laying the groundwork and having this team on the right track. Their pitching staff has been on track so far, especially the names we mentioned, Pintero and Barros. Last up, worth mentioning, the Range Riders bullpen has been lights out to start the season with John Natale racking up three saves to grab a piece of the Pioneer League lead. Justin Coleman, Ryan Cloud, Roy Robles, Andrew Holweger, Lyle Hibbets, excuse me, and Joseph Kinski have all been impact performers as well out of the bullpen so far for Glacier. Overall, just a strong start to the season for the Valley's professional baseball team. And with the Paddleheads coming to town this week, I think the fun in the Valley is just getting started. We're going to have a clash of two highly skilled teams at the top of the division squaring off at Glacier Bank Ballpark over the weekend. I'm really looking forward to the action. I think as far as maybe, you know, did the Range Riders need to sweep this series? Do they need to take the series? No, but what you want to do is you want to go out there and you want to compete. You want to fight. The Paddleheads are perennially one of the best teams in the Pioneer League. So this is an opportunity for the Riders to make a statement first in Paddleheads country on the road and then back home. So looking forward to the action at Glacier Bank Paul Park over the weekend. We'll be keeping up with the riders on the road. We'll be checking in next week with all that fun stuff. So that being said, that's a wrap for this week's episode of the Interlake Sports Now. Thank you as always for checking out the show and don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube to stay up to date with the latest and greatest from the Interlake Sports Now. Today's episode is brought to you by Nomad. Go to the Flyheads Best Manufacturer. Nomad is a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission-focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana-based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more info. That's nomadgcs.com for more information.